Hey guys, Troy from Washerite. Uh, just building a new motor and pump. So obviously, um, five and a half gallon per minute general pumps. Sorry, an inter pump this one. Um, we're gonna mount this to the Honda GX390. First thing I've done is take off the cap bolts that hold the shaft seal in place. I have to replace it with an adapter plate. So obviously, on the adapter plate, I do have a seal. First thing I need to do is pre-oil that seal. So I always get a cap, a little bit of oil, not a lot. This is just general LS90 gear oil. All I do, run the seal through the oil. Get it on my fingers. Run it around. You need to make sure that the seal's in there firmly. Don't be afraid just to lube up the outside. Now, if you don't lube up the O-ring, the O-ring will deteriorate a lot faster. Obviously, that goes on. Okay, so in with the um, reduction box kit, comes with these new bolts, with these washers, with O-rings in them. Slip them on. I do need to get some Loctite. Okay, so we're back. We've got some Loctite now. Let's try the other tube. Okay, so Loctite them on. Now it's pretty important that you do them, when you do them up, do them up in stages opposite each other. So when you do crush that O-ring, you are crushing it evenly. Okay, so that's one stage. Okay, back to the final stage. Okay, that's the adapter plate. The next one is actually the drive cog. As you can see, it has a small hole. That small hole is for that grub screw, which locks it in place. Again, very important, that grub screw is liberally used with Loctite. Just like that. Again, what I tend to do I would tend to start the actual grub screw in there to start with and slide it down in one go. Before you slide it down, guys, graphite grease, or well, this is pre-assembly lube, which is exactly the same thing. This will stop it fusing together with heat and moisture over time. And if you ever have to replace it, you it will, you will thank yourself later for doing this step. It's actually pretty crucial, actually. Very crucial, so. Lower that down. Do up the grub screw. 
Okay, a little secret with the grub screw once you've done that by hand. Put a spanner on it to give you a little bit more leverage. That means that you've done up rock tight. Now obviously we have the bell housing. The bell housing has a groove around there. And that is where this O-ring seats and seals. Um, I like to put the O-ring around here. So what I normally do, a little bit of oil, all the way around. Make sure that O-ring seats. Again, keep your O-ring lubricated. You'll thank yourself later for that. Now, what's important is how are you going to clock this pump? So for me, it is important that this pump goes that direction. Another good thing about these PA reduction boxes is they separate each bag for each stage. So this bag now is purely here to finish off the pump and the bell housing reduction box assembly. Okay. So again, we got four cap bolts with these are con conical washers help lock it in. These need lock tight as well guys. Okay. So again, we need to make sure we clock this pump right. Not like that. Okay. Same thing guys, with these, you need to do them up opposite each other in three stages. And what I've noticed guys, these pumps used to have a hole. So you can actually put your Allen key down there to do it up. For some reason they no longer have that. Once I start feeling some resistance, I'm going to stop cranking it. Ok, 
Okay, a little bit of resistance. I'll leave that there. Crank that one. Crank that one. Okay. Obviously, sump plug guys goes on the bottom. Uh, so it might be nineteen. Okay. The recycle glass. With these uh, polymer side glass guys, you really should do them up by hand. They do strip pretty easily. Obviously, we've got a breather cap now. That's our pump and reduction box, guys, mounted together. Now we need to mount it to the engine. This zip tie literally is just there to. Um, Hold the keyway on. Okay. So obviously the next thing we need to do is make sure that the keyway receiver is at 12 o'clock as per the pump. As you see there guys, it's not quite 12 o'clock, but I am able to change that around. pretty easily. Just like that. And now it's 12 o'clock. Again guys, really important assembly lube on the drive shaft. You will thank me later. I had a guy in my videos um, call me an idiot because I put the assembly lube on. He was trying to tell me that whenever you service the engine, you should be taking the pump off and uh, checking the shaft for rust and then cleaning the shaft up, the shaft up with some sandpaper. Um, I think that guy needs an uppercut. If you're dumb enough to take the pump off for every service, you're an absolute fool. Okay guys, so we need to get this pump to this drive shaft. Believe it or not guys, it went on that easily. Um, it doesn't go on that easily very often. So this last bag guys, um, everything in this last bag is all the hardware to mount the reduction box to the engine. Um, so what we have here guys, we have four bolts, four brass spacers, Four standard washers, which we don't use. 
and we have four conical crush washers, which we do use. So how we use it is the conical crush washer, hold it up there, goes on. The space that goes between the reduction box and the engine to pull it off the engine a little bit. Okay, one thing guys, I was asked the other day by one of my local competitors about mounting it up and he asked me why he was mounting a second hand one up and I told him to make sure he used grade eight bolts. As you see on the end of the bolt, if you don't already know, it zooms in, you see that's his 8.8. .8. Grade eight guys, it's a high tensile bolt. Uh, it's not gonna break. Anything else, there's a good chance it will break. You'd be surprised how much torque these little engines put out. Again guys, Loctite. Okay, so we need the spacers. One of the tricks I use guys is these long handled, long nose plies. They work well to hold the spacer in the cap. Just a box of bolts, guys, I use to um, prop up the engine and pump. Okay guys, what I do with the last one before I do anything, I grab a spanner just to confirm it's 14 mil. So that one's in there. Okay. Just to make things easy, guy ratcheting wrench. Like everything else, guys, if it's done up in stages. This is not so important to worry about getting it done, tighten it up diagonal from each other. We're not actually worried too greatly about any O rings. Oh, 
That won't work. Okay guys, so that's literally complete now. Um, all we've got to do is a couple more small things. Um, the first one is obviously the oil dipstick breather for the pump. You guys in the States use these all the time. These are actually mounting brackets for the pump. Um, we don't use them. So guys, as you guys know, you guys use these all the time to mount the pumps when you're running a belt drive unit. Um, we don't. We don't run very many belt drives. I have one belt drive unit. Um, so, a lot of you guys in the States run your pumps that are mounted and the pumps just free hangs out there. There's no support. Um, pretty reckless and pretty stupid as far as I'm concerned. The vibration of all that weight on these mounting bolts in here. What I recommend you guys buy is one of these. It's literally it's a threaded rod with a flexibly you know, foot. And basically, whatever plate you're mounting it on, you drill a hole, you drop this through the hole, do a nut in the bottom to hold it at the right height, and the pump just literally sits on it, and it supports it. Great idea, guys. They're cheap as chips. So that's how we mount these. Um, so yeah, guys, that's one motor and pump completed. What I'll do in the description below, I will put the model numbers of the pump, the reduction box, and the engine, and I'll also put the link to one of these. If you guys need any information about where you can get this stuff from, just ask, I'm always happy to help. Don't forget to like and subscribe to get the further videos coming. If you have any questions, just ask. Have a good afternoon, guys.